we go. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I don't know something, something. This is fire. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about sampling as quickly as I can in FL Studio. I feel like I'm pretty good at sampling. Obviously, I don't sample a lot because, you know, I make YouTube videos. I got this sample from Elio Grande. This is at 152 BPM. I know this because where I downloaded it, it told me. If you don't know the BPM of a sample, you can play it. And then you can come into FL Studio, right click on the BPM, click tap and then you can tap it out. So I'm just gonna play it and tap it out to figure it out. Hopefully I get 152 or I'm gonna look like an idiot. So that's the part I wanna sample. This song was recorded in the 80s. Back then they just used to record everything live. So when you're sampling, things tend to be very humanized. That part of the song that I wanna sample is 148. Good thing I tapped it because that's gonna help me out. I'm gonna go to the master track in FL Studio. If you don't know how to get to this, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> click F9 to open up the mixer. I'm gonna click this drop down. I'm gonna go into Edison. I'm gonna normalize it just cause why not? You know, I'm just gonna drag this whole thing in just so we can look at it. 148 BPM, look at me, I'm perfect. I'm right on the dot. I'm gonna show you two different ways that I like to sample. One of the ways is just by chopping up this audio with the slicer, getting it nicely so it loops, and then just using the audio, maybe slicing it up a couple more times and like moving stuff around. You know, you can, you can sample like that. Another way is in Fruity Slicer. Those are the ways that work best for me, I think. I've tried all, all of them. I've used SliceX. You know, some people use Serato Sample and all that stuff. This is the way I like to do it. So I'm gonna try to match this to the BPM as perfectly as I can. Go to the None tool. Make sure stretch is not on. We don't wanna stretch this. I don't want any of this intro part for now. I don't really care. I'm just gonna try to match up this part so that it loops perfectly. And you can tell where the loop starts because the waveform is getting louder right here. I'm gonna double click on the sample. I'm gonna cl click generic on the de-clicking mode just so we get these nice little fade in and fade outs. I'm gonna go back and select the line on the snap to grid. I'm gonna right click and do this so that it loops. This is where I want my loop to be, from the fifth bar to the ninth bar. So now I'm gonna go back into the none tool. I'm just gonna click on this and just drag it to where I think it would start and then uh, just listen to it. Actually, I'm gonna go to the 13. Honestly, it feels like it's going a little bit slower. I'm gonna put, do 146 BPM. 147. See, that's what's tricky about these old songs is sometimes it's harder to sample them. Me personally, I want this to line up perfectly. I don't want it to be that humanized for the sampling part. Like the notes in between will humanize it where it kind of has that flavor to it. So I'm gonna, I have it at 146 BPM. It's hitting right here too early. It's not, it's not looping good. So I'm just gonna go back to my 148. The place where it ends is in a nice spot. We're in a nice spot where the loop ends. So I'm just gonna, do that and then move this over to the right. So it's very off right now. I am gonna slice this with the none tool on. So I'm gonna slice any moments that I wanna just adjust. There's ways to just drag it without having to slice, slice, and slice. So that would be an easier way to do it, but I've been doing it like this forever, so it's fine. I've always done this. This is a good tip too, if you play an instrument or play the guitar, and you're not very good at timing the BPM up. Instead of having to do 100 takes, you can just stretch everything and move things around so that they loop good. <laughs> All right, so that loops pretty good. Sometimes with older music, the samples are like that because everything just gets played. So I'm gonna now just export this as a WAV file. So now we got our sample that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna come in here to where I found the file. I'm opening it up in Edison. I don't know why it didn't load. And I'm gonna normalize it. And I'm just gonna click on this to mute that channel now. 
And now we got something that times up good. Now we can really get creative. So I'm gonna drag this in, click this little button here and drag this in. And I actually do wanna speed it up. So I am going to speed it up to 160. It has this weird honky tonk feel to it. I'm actually gonna slow it down. I'm gonna go 95. Restretch all channels, yeah. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna time stretch this. Instead of speeding it up to 180 beat, beats per minute, I'm gonna slow it down to 95 and then just time stretch it using this. Sounds fire. I'm gonna export it again just to like stamp it in there. All right, we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna open it again in Edison at 95 beats per minute and my computer is frozen. Please don't do this. Okay, I should probably save. <laughs> so we got our sample at 95 beats per minute. I'm gonna come in to add at the top. I'm gonna add a uh, Fruity Slicer, whatever the hell it is. This is Fruity Slicer. Because we loaded Fruity Slicer at 95 beats per minute, the project file and the loop is at 95. So everything's good. We don't have to do anything. I'm gonna use that same drag tool and just drag it right here. First thing you wanna do in the sampler is click this little slice tool and just click it beat. Now we have our sample. Chopped up perfectly so that we can sample it. I like to turn this attack up right here just to give it even a more sampled feel to it. Just makes it clean and gives it more bounce, honestly. So I pitched it up, I'm gonna pitch it down. Let me pitch it up. And when you pitch up and down in Free Slicer or anything, anywhere, keep an eye at the top left. It's at zero cents right now. This is an octave. 1200 cents is one octave. So that's one octave up and down. If you don't know what an octave is, this is C, this is one octave up. It's the same note, but one octave up. This is one octave down. There's 12 notes in between each one of these keys. 100 cents is just going the next note up. And same thing with a sample. If you have a sample and you pitch it up 100 cents, you need to go up one on every counter melody 808 that you have, a uh, vocal chop or whatever, just so it matches. So I'm gonna mess around with this right now. I'm gonna go and click pattern one. Free Slicer likes to just draw out the sample for you. So I kind of liked how this was sounding. This was kind of sounding fire, but let's see. In the fourth chop here, if you watched my other videos, you would have seen this. I. Uh, I clicked the reverse just to reverse that one. So what you can do with Fruity Slicer, which is cool, is that I would stay in the line, snap to grid, and you can click around and just sample it here. And get a different sound. And you want something that just repeats and is catchy. This is the place where you can make a masterpiece or just destroy it. I think I was going too, a little too hard, so I'm gonna keep it simple.
And then from there, I mean, you can build off of that. Now that we got it in a pattern, like we can really do whatever we want. I feel like I've been making a J. Cole beat this whole time, so I'm just gonna. cool thing you can do when you sample to be like hey look I sampled it and now you know because I'm showing you I'm gonna take the original sample I'm gonna get the intro from it and I'm gonna move it here and we're gonna find how much I pitched this I think I only pitched it in while I was in here so 500 cents down I'm gonna go down 500 cents and this should be the right pitch now That's everything you need to know about sampling in FL Studio. Subscribe. See you in the next one. Uh, bye. <laughs>